Hey everyone, Parker with The Culture Project here, and today we're going to be talking about the body. So, story time. In 1564, Pope Pius IV ordered that all of the naked figures in Michelangelo's The Last Judgment be covered up. The work is super stunning, super iconic, and it sits right in the middle of the Sistine Chapel. I had a chance to go a couple years ago, and it is just phenomenal. And so, Pope Pius IV didn't see really a need for there to be so much nudity in a place like the Sistine Chapel. And so he ordered that they all be covered up with loincloths and fig leaves and all the like. And so that's how the work remained for about over 400 years. Until one day in 1980, Pope John Paul II made a historic commission to have the painting undergo restoration. And in the midst of that restoration, he also ordered that all of the previously naked figures be restored to their original nudity. Yeah, that's right. The Pope of the Catholic Church ordered that more nudity be shown in the Sistine Chapel. He even went on to say, quote, The Sistine Chapel is, in fact, if one can put it as such, the sanctuary of the theology of the human body. This might sound shocking for some of us because maybe we grew up believing that the church had a negative view of sex and sexuality and the human body. And that might be because we had bad role models in the faith. We had um, bad teachers in the faith that believe these things and so they pass that on to us as well. And so maybe we think that the church only tolerates sex because it makes babies and we need more babies and that's it. Or that the church is, you know, the body is there and it's okay, but actually the spiritual is like way more important. So let's not even focus about that. That'd be an inaccurate way of viewing the church's view of the human body. In fact, we can often hear this word body positive be thrown around, and that can be used in a lot of different terms. But if we're using it in the fullest sense, we could say that there's actually no one more body positive than the Catholic Church. There's actually no one who thinks the human body is greater than the Catholic Church views the human body. But to John Paul II and the church as a whole, the body isn't an obstacle to God, it's actually a window. Actually through the body, the church teaches that we are able to more perfectly see God. In fact, St. John Paul II said this, he said that the body and only the body, in fact, is capable of making visible the invisible, the spiritual and the divine. That's because the body is good. Did you, did you know that? Did you know that the body is good? Is anyone, have you ever heard that um, before in your experience of the church? Because that's actually what the church teaches. That we are made in the image and likeness of God. That doesn't mean that God looks like us, but that we look like God. And not necessarily in a physical way. So it doesn't mean that God looks like a, you know, five foot eight man with dark hair and, and brown eyes. No, it, it means that we image God in the fact that, yes, we have an intellect and we have a will, but we also image him in our ability to love then, right? With our intellects, with our will, we're able to choose the good of another. Um, we actually image God. We even image God even in our own bodies because who is God, right? Well, we read uh, from St. John that God is love. And so St. John Paul II actually says that we image God, yes, through our intellects and through our wills. We can see and choose the good the same way that God can. But we actually image God even more perfectly whenever we are a communion of persons. Whenever we are loving and we are in communion with other people, we actually image God more perfectly. And so, what does that have to do with the body being good? Well, this truth is written right directly into our bodies. Not to go too in depth about this, but just stating the simple fact of a man's body and a woman's body are different. And if you were to examine one without the other, you notice that there's some key differences and some things that don't really make sense unless you bring the other body in as well. Actually built into our bodies is this very relational aspect. That there are certain parts of our bodies that don't make sense without another. There are certain parts of a man's body that don't really make sense unless we know that there's also a female body. And so that is just one small way, there's so many others that we can point to that show that we are actually made for love, that through our bodies we image God. And so the body is actually something incredible because if what St. John Paul II said was true, that the body and only the body is capable of revealing the invisible, the spiritual, and the divine, that means that that is incredible. That means that if we image God, not only through our intellects and wills, through our souls, but also through our bodies, 
That means the body's a pretty big deal. And that means that we don't have anything to be afraid about whenever it comes to the body. That if we look at all of the precepts of the church regarding human sexuality, instead of with a negative mindset, but with a positive one, we begin to see more clearly that the church is actually trying to guard authentic love. The church actually sees most clearly how awesome and amazing the human person is, body, soul, and everything. And it wants to protect that. It wants the human person to thrive and actually to be fully human. It's when we do these things, it's when we are watching pornography, it's whenever we're uh, having sex before marriage, it's whenever we're using these aspects of our humanity in the wrong way that we're actually being less human. We're actually not free to live as fully alive and happy as we want to be. As, as we should be. It's actually whenever we're living out lives of virtue, we're living out this ideal, this roadmap that the church has laid out for us, that we actually are fully human, we're fully alive, and we're fully joyful in a way that lasts and with a certain peace that only the Lord can bring. And so I guess to wrap up, you know, to say that the church is body positive or that the body is good, that doesn't mean that we just throw it around you know, willy-nilly or, or anything like that, right? Um, but whenever something is precious to us, it deserves to be reverenced. Whenever something is actually valuable, we need to veil it, right? And only reveal it to the proper people at the proper time. And so if we've grown up, maybe, thinking that, you know, our bodies are bad or that sex is bad, that doesn't mean that we go all the way to the opposite extreme um, and just completely have no regard for it. No, there's a middle ground and that's that there's a proper time and a proper place for everything. And that's where the church's uh, precepts on sexuality, that's where they, where they find their fulfillment in. Through your body, you reveal something about God. You reveal that we are not meant to be alone, that we are made to be in communion with one another, and that God is love. And so we really, um, at the end of the day, want to remember that we are treating ourselves, others, our bodies with the proper respect and dignity that they deserve as children of God made in the image and likeness of God. And so with that being said, I'm Parker Berthlot. This is The Culture Project. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, let us know what hit you the most in this video, and make sure you tell us what you want to see more of. Thank you so much. God bless.